Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode today. We are so excited because you could be anywhere on the internet watching absolutely anything, and you've decided to spend some time with us today. Whether you're on live or on the replay, we want to hear from you. So please comment down below. Tell us hello. Tell us where you're joining from. Say hi so that we can say hi back to you as well. I'm going to make sure all my stuff is up and ready to go for us today. And I want to tell everybody happy International Women's Day. We're going to be getting to that as well as our hot topics and our guests. So I'm really excited. For all of you that are veterans or new here, welcome to another episode of The Breakthrough. It's the spiritual view for your soul and mind where we dig deep on today's spiritual hot topics and inspire you with stories from our guests that are sure to change your life forever. I'm really excited to dig in with our guest today. For anybody who's new to the show or new to me, my name is Jessica Dugas. I am an intuitive mentor and the host of The Breakthrough. And today we have a very special guest, Jasmine Balamuri, who is joining us. She actually lives less than two hours from me up the road, a little bit north, more north in Alabama than I am. So really excited to have two Alabama girls on the show today. And of course, we have a couple panelists who I'll be bringing on as well today. I mentioned, of course, that today is International Women's Day, and um, I saw a quote on my friend Christine Furtado's page, so shout out to Christine. Um, it says, be that girl who wakes up with purpose and intent. Be that girl who shows up and never gives up. Be that girl who believes anything is possible and is willing to work for it. I just love that quote, and, um, and I thought you guys would love it too. So happy International Women's Day, everyone. I also want to take just a minute um, and recognize my uh, our sister community here in Opelika, Alabama, to Beauregard Community and Smith Station. Um, we send you so much peace and blessing for the devastating tornadoes that took place here this past week. We've got the President of the United States visiting us here in Opelika. He actually, my kids watched the um, helicopter fly over just a few minutes ago. And um, we just want to send you so much love and so much peace in dealing um, with all of the aftermath from the storms. And I really want to give a shout out to this whole area, this whole Lee County here in Alabama, who has really come together to raised so much money and so many things for all of the families and the 23 people, of course, who lost their lives in the tornado. So our thoughts and prayers are with all of you guys. And um, we hope that it's no time before the pieces are picked up and we can grow and move forward from this. So I want to take just a minute and acknowledge everybody that is joining us today. I want to say hi to my dad, Greg, popped on too for a minute there. Bruiser, Crystal Heather, oh, Heather's joining from the panel. She's in our green room enjoying that coffee and cookies. And so, of course, we want to get to our hot topics, and I want to bring them on with us today. First and foremost, I have our returning panelist from last season. She's our declutter coach and consultant, helping us to stay organized through our breakthrough moments. Everybody, please please hit the heart button and welcome my friend Heather Clark to the show today. Hello, Heather. Hello. Hi, <laughs> happy International Women's Day. Yes, happy International Women's Day to you as well and all the women that are watching and anyone who's watching the replay as well. Yes, and you're in, we, we're very international right now. We've got we you are. In Canada, we've got us down in the States, and uh, and that's exciting. I, I say this all the time, that I love how we can be on shows like this. Like we had Lucinda on last week, who was coming from South Africa, and we've just had people all over the world coming on. Is that is that something that's exciting for you too? Oh yeah, like I just love, well, and the, the technology today, how we can do something like this and run a show where we're all in different countries kind of deal, like that's just amazing. So absolutely love it. 
Yeah, I love that too. Like you see other talk shows, you know, on TV that where they're all sitting at the same table and occasionally they'll have someone like video in from somewhere, but we all video in all the time. So exactly. look at us. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I got to welcome our next panelist today, who is our one of our newer panelists from this season. She is our transformational midwife helping us to really get our lives in order and experience these fabulous breakthrough moments. Everyone, please hit the heart button for my friend, Crystal Cockerham on the show today. Yay. Hi, Crystal. Can't hear you. She lo We lost her audio. Listen, every time Crystal comes on here, I tell you that you're peaceful, but you are a ball of energy, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> you just come on here and listen, we have, we were having all kinds of tech issues before the show. <laughs> it's just too, it's too much. It's too much. We should stop this too much energy. Um, so we were talking about this before the show about International Women's Day. And like, I don't even know, I don't know when it started or what the catalyst was behind it, but what sort of vibes do you get from, from this day, Crystal? I, I, well, at the surface layer, it is, um, as we were talking about before the show, the growth of um, and the reemergence of women's roles in society, right, as women as women. But I was actually reflecting on um, that this morning, and I was going to um, share a post, um, and I didn't, life happens. Um, but I wanted to challenge each and every woman, like, just to acknowledge that piece of them inside, that divine feminine spark, right? That space, that, that place where they can feel like a goddess, like their inner goddess right. comes out kind of thing. Um, because I look for that in everything. And um, anyways, I was on that track and then, you know, my insurance <laughs> agent called and, and said, da, 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 and I went, woo, okay, left brain, here we go. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> we always appreciate the squirrels on this show. I'll tell you what. Listen, sometimes I have been in the middle of, especially when I'm introducing Tara on the show. Bless it. I every time I, I'm introducing her and halfway through introducing her, I'm just kind of like, I don't, I don't know where I go. I don't know I'm just gone. I'm just gone. So um, yeah, so it's, it's an exciting today, of course, and we wish all of you women across the globe a happy International Women's Day, and we're so excited that you join us. I want to, uh, I have to give a little laugh because Bru Bruiser said, holy mother, Her Heather's hair is down. <laughs> Bruiser <laughs> said that. <laughs> <Seriously? laughs> <laughs> that make of a difference? Oh my gosh. That's of funny. all the things, like... Of all the things that could be said, we love you, Bruiser. You're so funny. Um, so anyway, I want to get to our hot topics today because it is a juicy one. So this is based on, we're going to talk a little bit about relationship and who's at fault in relationships when things kind of go awry. And there was two different quotes that I saw. Um, one of them you guys may have seen posted on um, the breakthrough page. I want to pull that up here because... Listen, you guys, I have so much pulled up everywhere. But um, the one quote said, <clears throat> a real apology is remorse, followed by silent space and changed behavior. A real apology is less speaking and more personal work on yourself. A real apology is looking within and addressing what caused you to hurt someone you love. And I just want to highlight that last part, um, what caused you to hurt someone you love. And then the other quote was, um, remember, people are the way they are because of them. People love the way they love because of them. People do the things they do because of them, not because of you. And what sort of triggered me, and we were talking a little bit about this before the show, was that sometimes we see these quotes and 
it's really easy when things go awry in a relationship to go to see a quote like that and go, oh, good. It's not my fault. Like, it's not I don't even have to think about it. Good. Um, and and to me, that's sort of automatically pinning it on the other person without taking that time we need to reflect and look at ourselves and see if there's anything within us that needs to shift and change as well. So um, I know I know you were real strong about this behind the scenes, Crystal. How do you feel about um, that? These sort of quotes about relationships. Um, it, it's one of those paradoxes. It's true and it's not at the mm -hmm. same time, right. right? Because everything is twofold, and you know we were we were all talking about this beforehand. It it doesn't excuse it, and I can see how some people seeing that quote out of context can say, oh well, I don't have to apologize because it's about me. I just have to, you know, do my own thing about that. But that is not the truth. I mean, you should always be considerate and respectful of other people's feelings because, and, and take accountability for your actions because in that way you're training them how to respect and be accountable to you, right? It's that reciprocity. So while yes, absolutely, it is all a reflection of what's going in, in the why, but if you're in a relationship, that means it's more than just you. So, you know, there, there's a responsibility there to the other person and it, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I'm so happy that you use that R word because, because so many times I've heard from, and, and even people in the, in the spiritual community that have said, you know, you shouldn't have expectations with other people and, and, you know, your responsibility is to yourself. But when you're in a relationship, that is a commitment to the other person. That's how I've always seen it. it, it and there is a level of responsibility there, I feel like, to sort of honor the other person. I mean, isn't that like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I see quotes like this sometimes and I get kind of fired up because I'm like, there should be, there, it's a reciprocal thing. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be a two-way street. And what was the quote you were saying real quick, uh, Crystal, before we came on? You said a teacher had. Um, oh, yeah. Um, so it was actually my third grade teacher. She always said, I don't want to hear the excuse. It takes two people to talk, one to talk and one to listen. So even though your lips aren't moving, you're letting the other persons, mm -hmm. right? You're giving them the audience. So, um, you know, I think that it's, it's just one of those things, like silly things. I just have never forgotten because mm -hmm. it's totally true. It takes two to tango. Yeah. So, you know, look at those spaces. Um, Gosh, this would have been a really good one for Lori too. I wonder if she's I know. <laughs> today. Um, it, it would be one of those like growth opportunities for not just you personally, but for the relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's time to re-examine those that commitment and renegotiate what that is and what that looks like. Like, okay, this may have been okay a few months ago, but where I'm at now and the person I'm evolving into, this is no longer okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna have to Absolutely. say it doesn't just work with relationships. This mm -hmm. is like friendships. This is like yeah, yeah, parent child ships. <laughs> like it's yep. it's the whole thing. Like it's not even just it because as you guys were saying that I'm thinking, yeah, no, it's still with the you know with my kids. Like you know as much as you know we want to fight and you know obviously my Virgo son and I you know are very much like so we butt heads and stuff like that. But it's still it's letting them talk, letting me talk. You know, kind of dealing with that back and forth, and it's not you know just his fault and it's not just my fault it's mm. both as a collective mm. and same with my daughter and same with anyone like you know the friends and stuff like that like regardless of what it is it's when two people interact with each other and that could be your you and your client as well Yep. Mm -hmm. and that's a really good point that you bring up too, because we can, we can look at that relationship. So you, you and your son are both Virgo. And so you can butt heads because you're so similar and you and your daughter are completely different signs. And yes. you can also butt heads because you're completely different. So there's no way that you can, you can't just pin it on somebody else. Like you, it's not a one way, a one way thing. And um, so it's, it's nice to be in, in good company on this topic today, because sometimes Sometimes, I, like I, we were talking, we were laughing before the show. Some of these memes that we see, they need a disclaimer. <laughs> they need a disclaimer at the bottom, right? Like this could be true, but 
<laughs> but you should look at look at everybody in the situation. Um, I want to say hi quickly to a couple more people. Hello, Tara. We were just talking about you. And uh, thanks for tuning in today. Hello, Linda. Hi, Joanne. Thank you guys so much for being with us today. We are so thankful that you're here with us. And um, let us know below how you feel about quotes like that. And if you think that um, it's automatically on the other person because everything's, you know, it's about them and how they process or is there um you know responsibility there is it a two-way street that needs to happen let us know in the comments and we will continue to respond to you as well i want to get to our guest today which i'm really excited about because um it's not often that we have we had one person last season also actually that lives closer to jasmine than i do um and so I'm really excited to have her on today. Jasmine Ballamurray is an intuitive healer and she's coming to us from the Birmingham area in Alabama. She is has a page on Facebook called I Am Healing One and we love every all the videos and everything that she puts out and everything on her page. I've been a, been a Facebook fan for a little while now and she's gonna be sharing with us a <clears throat> story about how an accident that she had led to her rediscovering herself. So everybody, please hit the heart button and welcome our new friend, Jasmine Bella Murray, to the show today. Yay, here she comes. Hi. Let's see if we can hear you or if we broke it completely. Can't hear you. <laughs> This is what happens on this show. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm excited because it would not, it would make for a real interesting show if we saw you but couldn't hear you. <laughs> yes, I do not, I'm all that well, so. <laughs> well, we just, we, we pinned it to our energy was just too powerful before because we just lost Jasmine completely. We lost her completely. <laughs> Jasmine, we would love for you to tune in, to, to chime in on our hot topic today. How do you feel about this sort of who's at fault in relationship? Is, is it all automatically on the other person and how they process it? Yeah, so I, I think it's a double-edged sword and I definitely think we have to be careful because I'm actually experiencing something like that and it was funny because a third party kind of had a conversation around that meme before you know just there about the meme today but that was the gist of the conversation that they had with myself and then the other person involved and I took it as oh because I had been beating myself up the other person was talking a lot of chaos and drama and I was like listen I'm out this is not what I need and so I just kind of stepped away to keep my boundaries in place. Then I was portrayed as the bad guy, right? Because I was taking care of myself. So they were using it like it's all her fault. She stepped away and she's ignoring me and, you know, all this carrying on. But I had to remind myself of that truth because it is in fact true sometimes. You know, when a person is lashing out and creating chaos, a strike or a harmful thing, that is about them. They mm -hmm. may they may have an emotion now, but the actions that they are taking are and they have to be responsible for that. And we can't take on the of another person's back, right? But at the same time, if you're the one causing the hurt, absolutely, we can't say, well, I hurt them because it's their fault. They did. You know, so it's really a double edged sort of uh, accountability, responsibility, equalization. Yeah, I think that's a really good point you bring up about um, about that. You know, when mo we have moments like that where someone's lashing out, we need to we need to remember um, that uh, that their their response and how they are they are speaking to you, responding to you, is is very much about where they're at. Um, but I think and I think that's that's something that could be put in that little disclaimer at the bottom of those memes that that's kind of what we're talking about and not necessarily you know uh, a failed relationship or something that has really gone gone wrong in a relationship. Um, and yeah, your sound is still a little bit in and out, but we can definitely hear you, hear you um, better than not at all. <laughs> better than not at all. Um, a little bit closer. How's that? 
Yes, just lay right on the microphone. <laughs> just, <laughs> so I'm really excited to have you on today because um, I think that when I when I read about a little bit about your story, I really feel like um, a lot of these breakthrough moments that we go through is initiated by, you know, a big event, like something that happens, you know, that changes things for us. So I would love for you to start us out today in taking us back to what kind of life was like for you before your accident that you had and, and kind of paint a picture a little bit for us. Yeah, no problem. So am I looking at you guys on the camera? Cause my tablet is sideways. So I'm trying to make sure it's it's all good we see you and that's all that matters <laughs> hey i don't want y'all to think i'm ignoring you so my life before this car accident in 2017 um it was pretty fulfilling i mean i had found my stride in my business um i had re-released my book you know i was enjoying the fullness of who i am if that makes sense um I think I had really gotten comfortable in my skin. So I enjoyed my dating life. I enjoyed my girlfriends. I enjoyed my family. My business was fulfilling. I was hiking. I was active. I really thought that I was in a place of, it's not perfect, but this is good. And then you have these moments, like you said, that kind of redefine or that break through. And for me, it really was, um, it was a breakthrough, which was, bad and good at the same time because it forced me to really release the binds that I had held myself in before that. You know, we all have these boxes and sometimes we don't even realize we're in the box. You know, we're stepping out, we're leaping and bounding, but we always find ourselves back in that safe space, quote unquote. And so the accident kind of shoved me in the back, like, <laughs> get out and forced me to just really open up my concept of who I was and what I was capable of and even things I was no longer capable of in that moment. And so it's been an interesting journey of having to let go of who and what I was and then rediscovering and redefining who I am at the same time. I love this because I think um, we hear a lot of stories, like I said, on the show where when we, when we go back and talk about the things that happened before the breakthrough moment, it's like, well, things weren't good. And it was all, you know, everything was, was awry and, and all of that. Um, but you're really saying that things weren't all that bad. Like you just were floating along, stuff was good. And so doesn't that just pull the rug out from under you? It really does. I mean, my life, I had been doing the work in my healing journey for quite a few years at that point. And so I was firmly in constant in my career. You know, I had faith in my gifts. I trusted, you know, what I'm here. I knew my purpose. I had just gotten engaged. Like we got engaged in March and the accident was in May. So, you know, I was really in a place of life is pretty good. And then I just felt like the rug got snatched out from under me. So it was it was interesting. It definitely was interesting. So when you had, tell us, tell us a little bit about, um, about the accident and sort of, um, you know, how, when you had the accident and like how long after that did, did, did things sort of, did, did your wheels start turning? Yeah. So it was an interesting period of time. Um, the accident was like the, I think the first or second week was May 9th. 2017 and we had just come back from vacation that Sunday and then I was in a car accident that Tuesday running errands and so I'm sitting at a light my husband was on the phone in in the car with me he was on the bluetooth in my car um so I'm listening to him talk I look up the light turns green I put my foot on the gas to take off and before I can take off this guy is slamming into the back of my car and I had nowhere to go. So it wasn't like I could just swerve. So I ended up being pushed and shoved to the right. And he goes off to the left and crashes into some trees. And so traffic stops because the other people, I think it's perpendicular. <laughs> the other people perpendicular to us had seen it. So they were able to just not move and let him, you know, continue his trajectory and stay out of the way. And so I'm fine. The adrenaline's rushing. I'm looking up in my rearview mirror and seeing his car crashing into trees. And I call 911 and she's like, well, ma'am, do you need an ambulance? And I'm like, I'm good. 
let me go check on him. So I go sprinting across the street trying to, you know, help him because he's crawling out the passenger door at this point. And um, so the ambulances came, the police came. Thank God there were witnesses who stayed because, you know, it was midday. People are going to pick up their kids from school. Um, but two of the witnesses stayed and talked to the police. And they said that what had happened is they saw him coming down the road and he just literally never slowed down. So I don't know if he didn't see me or what was going on. So my husband's frantically calling me because he had heard the entire thing on the Bluetooth and he's screaming like, are you okay? What's going on? And he's trying to get away from work to come get to me. And um, witnesses are asking me, are you okay? And your adrenaline is running. So I didn't feel the pain for hours. And then when it hit, it hit. And I realized, oh, this might be a little bit serious, you know, than I thought that it was. And so the coming weeks um, were pretty intense because we ended up going through a miscarriage at the same time. I ended up having major surgery at the same time. So what should have been maybe a quick recovery turned into like months later, um, I was barely getting out of the bed. And my doctors were like, what the heck is happening? Like you should have recovered from surgery now, what's going on? So they're doing all kinds of CAT scans and MRIs and sending me to surgeon consults. And they start finding like all these different things going on in my neck and my low back and my hip. And I'm being told at one point that I've got to consider having discs taken out of my um, neck and my low back and put metal space with that hip surgery. And I'm like, what? Wait, I'm 38, <laughs> you know? So I'm doing the research and I'm saying, mm -mm, not an option. And I, you know, I tried to find my own semblance of life again. And of course, everything changed. We went from two incomes to one income. We went from two able-bodied people running a household and dealing with the rental property to, you know, almost everything falling on his shoulders overnight and him having to come home and, and help me take a shower and wash my hair. And those are things you don't really think about until you're in this situation, literally having to navigate it and map it out. And so finally, you know, we found our stride again and I was back up slowly, but surely and um, trying to create a routine. And once one day we're in the kitchen, I'm cooking breakfast at the stove and I turn to go to the sink and I start screaming hysterically. He's like, what the hell just happened? And, <laughs> and it was like the way that I had turned had triggered something and pinched something in my back. Ooh. And my, um, they found it. one of my discs was leaking. It had burst. So it was dripping on my sciatic nerve. And so from that day, I started walking with a cane. So it was like, you know, we had just found our balance and boom, here we go again. And so it was just an interesting last, you know, a little bit over a year and a half um, of, like I said, I literally had to grieve and let go of who I was because I went from this girl that was hiking five, six miles a day, you know, doing all these different um, extracurricular activities, running with my dogs to walking with a cane and limping down the stairs to get to the vehicle from the house. And those little motorized carts you see in the grocery store. <laughs> you know, and getting all the little evil looks from everybody who wanted the cart, trying to figure out she's young, what the heck is she doing? You know, and uh, so I had to grieve who I was and let her go and really give myself permission to say it's okay to let her go. I cried a lot of tears over that. It's pretty scary. So um, at what point, sorry, I'm going to cut you off there. Um, when you say you let her go, like how long are we talking about? Like, did you realize, you know, after the second time when you pinched that nerves, you're like, all right, you know what? This isn't who I am anymore, blah, blah, blah. Or was, did you know? But that's the thing. Like a lot of people say, like when, when I hear that, I'm like, okay, well, I know it wasn't an all of a sudden thing, yeah, that it's a it gradual it was a real process, but the day I had to start using the cane, so the accident was in May and the cane came in October. So that was the day that I kind of got it. Like the light bulb moment goes off. Okay, you're making this worse by trying to hold on and continue to figure out ways to do the things that you used to do and make them accessible, you know? And so you, you, you kind of have a, excuse my language, come to Jesus moment where you're like, okay, either I'm going to start figuring this out or <laughs> I am going to be in a world of hurt if I continue the way that I'm going. And so I had that Jesus moment with myself and really said, listen, chick. And I remember standing in the mirror and just saying, listen, chick, it's time. 
and I cried some boohoo tears and my husband was like, um, okay, <laughs> you know, cause it's hard to put it into words for another person to understand. Right. Um, but yeah, that was the moment. The day that I had to start using the cane in October was the moment that that shift really started. And then it was probably over the course of the entirety of last year, 2018, the journey of learning, what are my new normals? You know, how long can I stand up? How long can I sit in this position? How long can I stand at the stove or, you know, take my shower before my hip starts to kind of buckle or so all of those discoveries of what are my limitations? And I think it really took me the last year. And it wasn't until December, I'm sorry, um, November, November of 2018, went through some really crazy stuff. And it wasn't until then that I realized, okay, I found her. I had found the new me. And there, there was a day of reckoning where I realized, okay, she's here. I don't have to keep looking, right? Hmm. So Jasmine, um, that day when you looked in, in the mirror and you literally, I, I'm going to call it surrendering, yeah. sur surrendered yourself to your circumstance and, um, maybe not that you accepted it fully, but you accepted that change was inevitable and you had to accept it. Uh, the change, no matter what it looked like in the long term. Um, what did you do from that day to say last November um, to help find the person who you realized showed up and you didn't have to look anymore? Yeah. So I basically became my own client, right? Because just because you have expertise in something doesn't mean that you do it all the time. And so, <laughs> and so that was the day that I realized the healer has to now refocus on healing herself again, because as we all know, you know, when you're a giver or a caregiver or a caretaker, you give, 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 give. And so coaches and healers, a lot of times fall into that hole of giving so much that we don't often reserve enough for ourselves, or we put ourselves into that deficit or that breaking point, right? And so I realized I had to talk to myself the same way that I would talk to any one of my clients and be like, listen, <laughs> this is what you're going to do. This is your homework today. These are the journal prompts you have. This is the affirmation or this is the tapping or this is the visualization or whatever it is. I, I had to step into third party person and act as if it was someone else that I was helping. And that I think helped put me in a place where I didn't have as much judgment for myself because that's really what took me so long. I know how to do this and I'm capable of this. I should not be going through this right now. I mean, real talk. And so, you know, getting to a place where I was able to say, excuse me, but fuck the judgment. I'm just over it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, literally you were shooting all over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was, day like I shifted and I said now you have a seat over here and I had to treat her as if she were someone else in order to save her and to best serve her and yet it was in part definitely surrendering but it was in part standing up because before that moment I wasn't aware of it but I had started to feel disempowered and so that was the moment that I also was able to stand up and be like <laughs> but I can handle this. You know what I mean? I may not be able to do it the way that I had, but I absolutely can do this. I'm capable. And so then, like I said, over the last year up to November last year, 2018, it was just the progression of testing the limits. What can I handle? What's the new normal? What's the new boundary? And then if I push those limits, these are the consequences that happen to my physical body or my emotional being, et cetera. And then defining what I was willing to play with. So I know these are my boundaries. And then how often do I feel safe enough to kind of edge it and push it so that I can keep growing and get back to the semblance of what I feel is my 100%, whatever that is now and redefining. I yeah. love, go ahead, Crystal. 
Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, so I have I have two questions. Um, one, physically, are you still healing and improving? And secondly, you spoke of yourself so um, I'm going to say dreamy, otherworldly before the accident. How close do you feel you are to fully loving and, and embracing yourself and the life that you're living now? At, as you did before the accident. So repeat the first part again, because I want to make sure I got it. To answer. Physically, are you still continuing to heal and improve? So physically, yes, absolutely. Um, now, those that really follow my journey and know me, they know I love working with crystals and stones. I'm all about natural healing, holistic healing, but I definitely am an advocate for creating a balanced healing journey, whether that includes medical intervention or not. Every person has to decide. For me, it had to include medical intervention because there was damage that I just didn't have the energy, the mindset, or the desire to try to tackle. <laughs> like, you have to know where you are, right? And so I mm -hmm. definitely do. Like, this is not a place where I can be like power to the woman and I'm going to do this by myself. And so I absolutely um, relied on you know, the doctors that I've had through this journey. And I actually just had a doctor's appointment on um, Tuesday and uh, with a pain management doctor. And so, you know, they were trying to change up some things because the ultimate goal for me, and they know that is for me to get back to as much as I can physically. And so um, along with the pain management, um, I work with a chiropractor, I do massage, I work with essential oils. So all of those things and crystals and stones, all of those things have been a tremendous part of my physical healing journey and it's ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely ongoing. And so that's been huge for me. The two words have been grace and compassion for myself and for my body. Um, so it's always ongoing. As far as who I was before the accident to now, I feel like I'm back to about 80% of her. My goal was not so much to be her again, but to even surpass her because there's so much more that I've learned in this journey. And so I feel like I'm about 80% back to her. And then once I feel like, yep, we're good now, then it's like, okay, let's use all of this to keep going. Because, you know, like I said, before the accident, things weren't perfect, but they were good. And I think that we all can co-create with whatever we believe in, whoever we allow in our circles we can co-create a life that we wake up to that, yeah, gives us that Kool-Aid grin smile or has us jumping and clicking our heels, you know? <laughs> yeah, I love, you. Jasmine, that your shirt says 100% healed. I, you guys can't see the whole thing from, yeah, you can't see. 100% healed because that really, that really embodies your mindset that even though you might not be a hundred percent physically this person that you were before, but that, but that you, you're, you're there and you're, you're believing it. And, and that's where your sort of your energy is residing in. Um, do you ever come as a healer? Because I think that this is, there's so many points that you've made that are really important, um, for, for those of us who are um, intuitives or healers and are, and are going through our own shit, so to speak, do you ever come across um, any comments or anything from people that are like, you're a healer, why aren't you like literally 100% like, like what's going on there? Do you ever come across that and how do you respond to that? All the time. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, it, it, I mean, I got that even before the accident, like anytime I would go through anything, I would have the little heckling crowd that'd be like, but I mean, you know, you, you got this, you know this, but I'm human, right? I'm spirit and I'm energy and I'm powerful, but I am absolutely still human and fragile in this body sometimes. And I, I just said that to a friend of mine last night, I was texting back and forth with them. And I said, I need some compliments. And they're like, are you kidding? You're amazing. And, <laughs> and I was like, but thank you. And so they laid the comments on me and stroked my ego. And I was like, thank you, because <laughs> sometimes I'm a pit bull in a skirt. And sometimes I'm a girl who just needs some loving, right? 
And so I had, again, grace and compassion. Those two words became tremendous for me through this journey. And it really forced me um, to dig so much deeper because our confidence can be so superficial sometimes if we just tell the truth and our esteem. And so it forced me on so much, so much more of a deeper level to see the glory and the power and the divineness that I am, you know, cane and all. And so it's funny because I have this purple cane. And so whenever I'm out, I always get these compliments and people are like, oh my God, that cane is so gorgeous for men and women. (laughs) And so that has, you know, that's done a lot for me because I was so self-conscious about it and it really helped to normalize it for me. And just force me to see I'm amazing, whether I am struggling with something, whether it's mental or physical or emotional, financial, spiritual, it doesn't matter. And I think the level of vulnerability that I chose, because I didn't have to, but that I chose to share through all of this, um, it really allowed more people around me. Because that's what I always tell them. Part of my purpose is to normalize it. It doesn't have to be some far off, like, woo-woo thing that's intangible it's real right and so I think it made them realize that you can absolutely be amazing and still be finite and still be fallible and be crazy but just be your own special crazy and be okay with it thank you for that no I think that's awesome and I don't know um for me it's normal like if I'm working with a client long term Somewhere along the way, there's a session that takes place that feels like it almost has to take place because the person has made so much growth, but they've hit another, like they're ready to up level again, yeah. right? And it, it's kind of, um, I compare it to watching your hair grow in the mirror. Like <laughs> but when I first met you, This is kind of like um, not really a recap, but a reminder of everything that they've already moved themselves through and as far as they've come already so that they they can acknowledge and see. Right. Because when you're when you're fighting to keep your head above water, sometimes you just feel like you're always fighting to keep your head above water and you don't realize you're like 100 feet closer to shore. You know what I mean? Right there. That right there has been so pivotal for me because I finally had the moment where what I tell my clients all the time clicked, celebrate the small and the big victories. And I stopped wishing that I was off the cane and wishing that I was quote unquote normal again and wasn't limping and all these things. And just being like, I'm me, bitches, I'm me. Like, I'm amazing. (laughs) I'm a superhero and I'm a superwoman and I am everything that I need to be. I already am. And this is where this shirt comes from 100% healed because healing is a journey, but it's a never ending journey. So you have to understand that it's always evolving and taking place because it already is, right? You know, that squirrel brain gets us chasing the ideals and we're all out there and ourselves and we got to celebrate. Yeah. So I have a question who, okay. So, you know, how as coaches, we always have what, you know, when we have a client, we're their accountability. So we are the ones that keep them accountable and stuff. But as the coach going through the healing, Mm -hmm. who kept you accountable? Oh my God. So I have a select group of people. And I would say there were about six people that I tagged them all in, like I'm drowning and I need help. And uh, one of them actually is a really good friend of mine, and she's a coach and healer as well. Um, another one was my husband, and another one was my spiritual mentor. Another one was the pastor. <laughs> um, and then a couple were just like good friends because I needed to be in a space where I didn't have to do the work all the time. I think people expect that from us. Like we're always going to be in work mode and fix it mode. And so I wanted to have people that when I didn't want to talk about the it thing or fix it or dissect it, that I could just cry and have my pity party and just be human. And so my, my girlfriends were absolutely, um, they were phenomenal, even when they didn't get it. And even when they didn't understand, because they were so used to me being strong. And I think there was a time when it was really hard for them to accept that Zaz doesn't feel strong right now. 
but they still dove in the deep end with me and um we all made it to the other side <laughs> and my my husband unfortunately it caused us a lot of problems because you know our relationship just dove off a cliff right here we were celebrating being engaged and planning our wedding and then we've got all this extra stuff on top of us all of a sudden and so you go from this place of feeling like you have you know yourself on top of the world and life is everything to you're suffocating and so it also allowed me to see the opposite end of the spectrum where some people were able to absolutely just be like i got you and then others struggled because they saw me struggling and it was hard for them to see somebody that they normally thought was invincible to be like i'm dying and i can't get up you know what i mean <laughs> It sounds like you had an amazing support system, Jasmine, and we've talked about that on the show before that although we we do, you know, we do the work ultimately ourselves when we're having these these breakthrough moments, but it continues to be a theme of how important your circle is, how important that those relationships are during during these times. And I think um, that's going to continue to be a theme as long as this show is coming on. So if you are someone who doesn't have a strong circle around you it's it's important that you start looking for that and finding that in your life and um, those people that are going to be supportive of you no matter what you're going through um jasmine we're almost to the end of time but i would love for you to share um finishing out today if there's anybody out there who is feeling like they're they're grasping on to what they've all always known about their life and about themselves and and they're they're feeling kind of that itch of something's got to change what would you say to them today as 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 a voice of reason moving forward if you will never be afraid to reinvent yourself this is the second time that i've had to reinvent myself after a major, uh, major traumatic physical incident and so I learned that I was absolutely invincible as long as I believed that I was, even when I felt weak and broken. And those feelings were very valid and they were very real, right? But as long as I gave myself space to feel them and coincide with the fact, but I'm still invincible, that was what got me through. And so I think wherever you are, it doesn't matter what's happening, how bad it feels in this moment. If you give yourself permission to feel what you need to feel. Be human, be weak, be broken, be vulnerable, feel it all. And then when you feel like you've given that enough space and you can start to transition, give yourself room to accept that you're still absolutely perfect and divine and amazing and splendid. And let those two things coincide. You don't have to pick one or the other. And if you can do that, it's going to help you figure out how to navigate whatever it is that you're facing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, so many good things. And um, I love when somebody comes on this show that I don't know very well. And then I'm like, oh, we have even more in common than I thought we did. So it's exciting. It's exciting. But um, it's been a, in such an honor having you on the show today. And we are so appreciative of you sharing your story because I think so many people as with all our other stories, but so many people can relate to, um, you know, having these moments where they just, they can't be their old self anymore. They, whether it's a physical reason or another reason, and they've got to kind of break out and move on and, and reinvent themselves, redefine who they are. And thank you so much, um, Jasmine, for being on the show today and for sharing your story with us. Yes, thank you. All right, ladies. So we are going to um, have a let me tell you what I love about Jasmine. Okay, so <laughs> I have beat this into the ground. And this is what I it attracted me to her on Facebook from the get go is that she never tries to diminish the human experience. It is so easy. And, and I and oh, I get fired up about this. Help me to find the appropriate words right now. Um, <laughs> um, it's so easy and, and we see this all the time in the spiritual community where people are saying to essentially live in the spirit realm, to connect with the spirit and live in the 5D and all of this. But, but you know, and, and then when, when we talk about feelings like anger or frustration or sadness or these very human emotions, they're like, well, that just means you're not as connected to spirit as you should be. And, and it, oh, 
Listen. <laughs> Help me. You're in the Help me right now. For a reason. How much time do we have? <laughs> yeah, right? right. Okay. So, and it, it gets me fired up though, because I am such a believer that we chose this human experience for a reason. If we weren't supposed to experience relationships and, you know, all of these human emotions, we wouldn't have picked to come do this. Well, the other thing is too, is the contrast hmm. of it. So the anger shows yeah. us what love is right shows us and gives us something to look for instead of because we don't like this feeling of anger we don't like this you know whatever so that's a human experience if we were just up in our you know you know higher self then we'd stay there we wouldn't come back into these human bodies each yeah. and every single time yeah I yeah mean, and i i um that really gets my goat too and um it's funny because my mentor calls it you know these new agey people and it's a really good definition. And I don't mean that in a bad way because they're on their journey and, and they're learning too, right? Um, but. She's so fired up. She has no idea what she didn't know. <laughs> <Right? laughs> she had to take a deep breath for that well, one. <laughs> because it isn't all love and light. Yeah. Love and light is what gets you through, right? Oh, and I'm wearing my, sh I'm wearing my sassy shirt today. Are you? I'm wearing, okay, I have to show my sassy shirt now because it goes with what we're talking about. All right, hold on. Okay. Is this the one, one you ordered? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you see the top part? Everybody you see that part? Okay. Uh -huh. And then, let me see if I can. <laughs> That's my shirt. Exactly. <laughs> Because it's not, you're so right. It's not all. It, it, it's not. That's what gets you through. We are all light and shadow. We are all everything. It mm -hmm. is what we choose to live from that defines us. But that doesn't mean our shadow side isn't there. That just means we need to be courageous enough to shine the light to move through it and clear out what's hiding. Mm -hmm. Right? So it doesn't have power over us. So we can't be triggered by it. I mean, that is what um, I like to define as really claiming um, that sovereignty over yourself and having dominion over yourself. You're always going to have emotions, yeah. right? If you're all love and light, how sad would that be to, okay, something I've recently experienced, have somebody who is incredibly dear to you pass on, you're not going to feel that loss. If yeah. you're all love and light, how could you feel that loss, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, just think about it just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. and I think it, it goes back to so much and, and I have to say a quick hello really quickly before I forget to Siri and, um, and Gina who are joining us today. I hope I said your name right. And I didn't botch that, um, either Jana or Gina, I think it's Gina, but you know, we never know. <laughs> I just want to say hi to you guys really quick and thank you for, um, joining and chiming in. Um, but it goes back to kind of what we've talked about of, of you know, we have all these um, emotions and things that we experience, but then it's our choice of whether we're going to set up shop and reside there or if we're going to use it to move forward and change things. Um, and, and, and I love that that sort of the decision that Jasmine had made was that for a while there, she was, she just allowed herself to experience where she was at and feel all the things. And then it was like, okay, girl, time to move on. Like it's time to take this and, 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 you know, change things for myself. And, and um, so I think that that, you know, that continues to be a theme as well, that when things happen like this, we have the choice. It's absolutely imperative that we experience all these human emotions, but then it's like, then that's where the important work comes in. What are we going to do with it? Are we going to set up a home here or are we going to use it for something good? Well, I think it also, especially as coaches and healers and stuff like that, it allows you to relate to your clients better too. Mm -hmm. It allows you to relate to others a heck of a lot better because of the fact that you've gone through these emotions and you know what, you know, what the mental part of it is, what the emotional part is, what the, you know, what you did as yourself and stuff like that. And then it goes, okay, here's my experience. Let's work with your experience and see where, you know, where it goes moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I agree with that too. And I think um, the other thing that I didn't get to ask Jasmine, but 
I'm pretty sure that this is a, you know, because this is something that we can see across the board. So I've had physical challenges the last for for a lot of my life, but really kind of ramping up over the last couple of years. And because we are dealing with other people who are also healing and also, you know, going through all of the things, it can make our healing journey even even more of sort of an uphill battle at times because we're taking on all of that in addition to our own sort of healing and everything that we're that we're dealing with and we're going through and so um i just have to give i have to give such a big hug and shout out to all of the um people out there that are helping other people while still helping themselves because it's such a it's such an incredible um really a, a journey, but I feel like in, in my life, it's been such a privilege because it really does, like you're saying, Heather, give you a, a different perspective. And it really does allow you to connect with your clients and what they're dealing with on such a personal level. Like it's a, it's a for real thing. And I'm sure like Crystal with you as well, you know, you've, um, you've been, you know, navigating the, the grief journey lately and how that must allow you to also connect with your clients who have dealt with that as well. Yeah. I mean, all, yeah, that's all I can say is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. Yeah. I mean, the, the, well, the, and especially the, as, as, as the healer, like it's hard because you know, the other people close to you, they always look to you or, or, you know, they come to you and sometimes it's, you just have to set back because I have to allow myself to go through my own process too. Like I can absolutely acknowledge, you know, there's, there's a couple of people who are, are close to me, you know, and they're at different phases, you know, one is anger, one is um, denial or whatever. And that's great. I can, I can honor that space that they're in, but I have to move through my own yeah. around it before I can, I can help them. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, that's such a, and, and you have to, you can't also in that same space feel any, you know, guilt on your, uh, about your own journey. I know that for me, when my brother passed away, and I was navigating that. There are people in in my life that are still, still at the very and he's he's been gone. I mean, years now, um, that are still at that sort of beginning stages. And for a while, like I moved through it through the grief process fairly quickly compared to some other people because I, I just feel like my faith is really strong. I feel like I'm very, I, I was, I was very connected to him in a spiritual way. And so um, I, I think it was for lack of a better word, easy for me. And I felt tremendous guilt in, in, in being able to move through that, but seeing so many people still struggling and, 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 I had to get to the point where I said to myself, you know, it's okay that it's okay that you moved quicker. It's okay that you are, you're in a good space. You know, how is it? It's, it's ridiculous that we have to sometimes give ourselves permission to be in a good place. And it's the same thing. It's been the same thing for my healing journey as well, where it's like people may have experienced some of the similar health issues as me, but I, I don't sit here and feel bad about it. Like I, like I'm, I'm good. And then I, but I have to give myself permission every day to be in a good space because there's so much judgment. I think that's past sometimes like, well, she must not really be sad and she must not really be hurt because she's just able to just, you know, move on. And it's a choice. Yeah. That it, we make. it is a choice. And it's also like an ability to, to know, like, when you're in it and you're moving through it versus when you're getting stuck in it. Because some people just really need help moving through it because they, they can get stuck in that because they haven't, like they haven't, um, so I recently described this in my little easing as loving myself through this. Mm. Like, no, I'm gonna get to be sad now. I feel like I'm gonna cry, so I'm gonna go cry. Yeah. And you know, or I'm, 
I need to move some energy. I got to have something to do and I need a job right now. I'm not ignoring my feelings. I'm just processed. Like I know myself enough and I love myself enough to give myself what I need to Mm -hmm. move through it and what I can't do or take on to move through it. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you guys, this has been so like so many good things on this show. You guys asked amazing questions too. I'm all like, that was really good. I'm sorry. I went to go interrupt you. (laughs) Lucinda did say something and I absolutely loved it. And I tried putting it to memory and, um, I lost it. It was like, no, I am a woman. I am something. And I am fragile. And I can't remember her exact words, but I'm like, whoa, we need to like write that down and like quote it for her That's because it was... a t-shirt and it'll be at the breakthrough show. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, it was a, a very powerful statement and you could feel how she really claimed that for herself, you know? Um, and so, uh, and it really, s- not knowing she really summed up her journey of moving through everything. Yeah. yeah I just found that to be really powerful and I'm, I feel bad that I don't remember it word for word at the moment. (laughs) This is why, this is why we have the replay friends. You can go back and catch all the golden nuggets on the Facebook page and also at the breakthroughshow.com, which by the way, if you have any friends or family that are not on the Facebook, um, they can also go to the breakthroughshow.com and it streams live right there. So you don't even have to have Facebook to watch the show, you guys. So you can always um, send your friends and family there who maybe are not a Facebook friendly and they will still want to watch the show. You can send them to the breakthroughshow.com as well. So it's been an amazing show today. We are so thankful for Jasmine Ballum Murray, my Alabama friend, my new Alabama friend. I'm hoping to get to see her maybe in the next couple of months, which will be fun. Thank you so much, Jasmine, for being on and sharing your story today. Thank you so much to our two amazing panelists today, Heather Clark, our declutter coach and consultant, and Crystal Cockerham, our Fabulous transformational midwife. I am just, listen, the squirrels are going now. The squirrels are going. We're so excited that you can come and join us in the party of the squirrels every single week here. <laughs> um, join us next week, uh, Friday, March 15th. We are going to have another new friend, Catherine Dwyer, on the show with us. And she's going to be talking about embracing your soul style. So kind of... Um, on the heels of this episode, we talk about redefining you and then, then we're going to embrace it. We're going to, we're going to um, embrace that new soul style that we have. So really excited to have Catherine on the show. In addition, we will have three panelists next week. Miss Lori Ann Davis, our relationship specialist, Tara Abram, our juicy girl, and Siri Reidenhauer, our trauma mama. I'm really excited to welcome them back on the show. And of course, thank all of you for joining us on the show today. Continue to use the comment section below and we will of course continue the party after the show and we will see you next week, same time, same place on The Breakthrough. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye.